Hi, Theo here from electroeffects.com on behalf of ovo.cz and in this video we will be looking at professional point o bars charting software and I will demonstrate how to install and use it. So if you'd like to follow along, go and grab yourself a free trial of this software at ovo.cz and while you're there make sure you also grab the Omnia remote and Omnia auto range indicators because I'm going to also demonstrate those. Both the trial and the full versions of this point o bar charting software are the same file. So once your trial period expires, you simply just need to enter a license key and you can keep on using it. The free trial period is 15 days and then every 90 days you're going to get another 15 day trial. Just in case you're revisiting the point o bars after taking some time away from them. If you've already purchased a license key, then get that email handy because I will quickly show you activation. And it's also worth mentioning at this stage that a license for this software is included with VIP membership at electroeffects.com. Now with the software downloaded and your MetaTrader platform open, we can install the indicators. If you go to File, Open Data Folder, this is where the files for this instance of MetaTrader are stored. The location will be different for everyone, so don't pay attention to that. The only important thing is that you go to File, Open, Data Folder. Then you go into the MQL4 folder, then into the Indicators folder, and this is where the indicators are stored. Now, I've already pasted them in there. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time, then this is where you want to copy and paste those indicators that you've just downloaded. Once that's done, you can open up your navigator window and in the indicators tree just right click and hit refresh and then these three indicators will appear if you hover your mouse over the indicator it's going to give you the version number it's just one way of doing that and before you get started go to tools options and in the expert advisors tab just check allow DLL imports this is on a global level so it saves you doing it you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, but I'll show you that anyway. And on the Charts tab, MetaTrader doesn't actually have a high setting for the maximum bars in chart when you first install it, so you're going to want to increase that. I just put it to 380,000 because 380,000 M1 bars is just over a year. 380,000 M5 bars would be just over five years and so on and so forth, so it seems plenty to me, but obviously that's just my opinion and you can increase that number as you see fit. Once you click OK we can now open a new chart. Uh, I'll just open the Euro Dollar. We're going to apply this point O bar generator to this standard time frame chart and it can be any time frame you want. Most offline generators or chart generators like this require that you use the M1. Uh, this software is not like that. It's not the case and you can actually run it on any standard time frame. It also doesn't matter if while it's running you switch time frames, uh, it won't affect anything. So I can either double click this or just drag it onto the chart. The first setting is your brick size and this is in points not pips so it may say 100 but that is 10 pips, it's 10.0. Okay, we're talking points not pips. The output uh, offline time frame number here, if you put nothing it will choose one for you. If you put a number, like let's say we're going to put 10, it will open you up or it will make this chart on an M10. If you want it to be an H10 or a D10, you would have to specify the H or the D, but if you just leave it as a number, it will default to the M. The number of offline candles is 1,000 by default. This is enough to fill any HD monitor these days, but if you want more history on your chart, then you're going to have to increase that number. And the session control, you can keep the chart continuous or break it into sessions. So I choose to keep things continuous, but I will demonstrate the sessions. And you don't really have to worry about these two. I mean, use recorded ticks where available. Um, it's obviously much more beneficial to have that set to yes, but if you want to switch that off, you can. And the paste activation code is only for those with the license key. So if you're applying this right now for the first time and you have no license key, we leave it blank, it doesn't matter. You get a 15 day trial and you can get a license later and fill this in later. If you do have a license key though, you will have received an email that looks something like this. 
the license key will be in the middle. You can just copy that license key. Obviously, it won't be XXXXX. It'll be something more uh, that looks more like a key. And we're going to just go over here and paste it in there. Okay, so once that's pasted in, you would not have to do this again. As soon as you click OK, the software will be licensed to your machine. You won't have to do this again. Okay, so it's a one-time deal. The final setting uh, the author has instructed me is just not that important to uh, most people, so don't worry about that. The About tab is another place where you can check the version number just so you, you see which version you're running. And there's also some general info there for you. The common tab, this is where you would have had to have selected allow DLL imports if we didn't perform that previous step. Um, you'd have to do it manually but because we set it globally that's automatically done and you don't have to worry about it. Now, As soon as I click OK the indicator will start running. It will generate the chart. As you can see I'm running a free evaluation and I get a date. If I had registered this software, then this system message would say registered to uh, myself. And uh, if there is a an update to the software available, this system message will say that there is an update available and you should go grab it. So if there is an update available while we're talking about that, you would download the new files. And once you have them downloaded, you go to File, Open Data Folder once again, MQL4, Indicators. And because we're updating something that's running, I'm going to shut down MetaTrader. I would then go and copy the software that I've just downloaded, which is right here. I'll do a copy and a paste, and we'll just overwrite everything like that. Okay, I actually copied the wrong one, so don't worry about that. So you're going to have now your updated files, and once you have copied and pasted and overwritten the old ones with the new ones, you can restart your MetaTrader. Okay, now that the MetaTrader has restarted, we're back where we left off. The indicator is running. You'll see an X uh, icon here. This just removes the indicator, a much quicker and easier way of doing that than going into the indicators list and deleting it. So it's just a nice bit of flow. The M10 button is the offline chart that we specified we wanted this to be and the number here is the brick size in points okay and i can actually update this on the fly if i want i just type in a new number and hit enter i'm going to put it back to 100 and before we launch the chart i just want to say that we can also run as many instances as we want so i could put another point o bar generator on there and make it 200 on an m20 and then click ok Okay, so now we have these two different offline charts running. You can do that as many times as you like. The only limitation is the room on your screen, but obviously you won't need to fill that up. So I'm just doing the one for now. I can use this red X to remove the other one like that. And to open the offline chart, I just need to click this M10 button. Okay, the chart has been generated and we can just enlarge that. I need to keep that M1 running. That's the feed chart. Okay, so back to the our point O bar chart. I'm going to apply a simple template. Uh, a quick uh, tip here: if you wanted to, you could name a template of your choosing offline. If you name the template offline, then once you create and launch one of these offline charts, it will automatically apply that template for you. So a nice little feature there. The point O bar chart is now on your screen. What you want to do is place the Omnia remote on that. You can have the clock display on or off and you can mark unreliable chart parts, yes or no. So I'm just going to start that up. You can see we have an unreliable chart part right here. This simply means that there wasn't enough info in the standard MetaTrader timeframes to create the chart 100% accurately. It's just letting you know that it's filled in the gaps for you here and smoothed it out. If your MetaTrader is running, then you're never going to have any unreliable chart parts. It's only if it was closed and you restart and it's building the chart from M1 history as opposed to live incoming tick data. So uh, that's the feature there. If you want to switch that one off, just go in here and put that to no. You can also switch the clock on or off, which is down on the right corner there. We're just going to leave the clock running. There's a session button and a feed button. The feed button just brings 
the, the feed chart to the forefront, just like when we click the M10, we go back to that. Of course, you can do that in MetaTrader with the tabs, but if you had multiple charts open, it might be easier to navigate through all your charts with these buttons. The MetaTrader standard uh, properties of a chart allows you to switch period separators on. So if I go ahead and do that, you'll see that every day we get this new period separator, just to let you know that this is a day, uh, this is a day, and so on and so forth. If you switch on the session toggle, then it's just resetting these .0 bars to start again at the beginning of each session of each day. Okay, It's going to change the chart slightly. It's, it's changing the anchor point of where the .0 bars start to be created from. So with session control on, every single period separator means we start printing the point over our chart again. If we switch it off, then the anchor point for the chart is as far to the left as you can go. It's the first bar. Okay, So that's uh, that option there. This is controllable here as as well as in the indicator itself. It was that, uh, those options. If I just take a quick look, I can remind you. It's this option here. So basically we're controlling this option directly from the chart. Okay, with this button. So that's that. You can also update your bar size, your block size on the fly. I could just switch that to 200 as you see. Change my chart. It's now uh, 20 pip bricks. And we'll just switch it back for now to 100. Okay, so nice and easy there. The other option available for you is a piece of freeware called the Omnia Auto Range. And all this is doing is trying to help you assess a brick size for this particular pair. Obviously one brick size isn't going to really work the same on every single pair because each pair moves at a different rate. It has a different magnitude of pit movement. There's different volatility going on. So if you'd like the software to calculate for you, then you just need to give it a few variables. The first one is a time frame for calculation. So if I were to set that to... 30 for example then it's going to now look at how many how much range is in these 30 minute candles and we're going to tell it how many how much time we'd like it to assess so if i were to put in 28800 for example this is around 4 weeks 4 times 5 days it's about a month of trading data and if I were to say I want to update it once a day, I'd have to put 1,440 minutes, which is a day, of course. So what we're telling it here is we'd like the software to look at one month of trading data, find out what the average 30 minutes of trading range is, and update that once a day. So if I go ahead and click OK, give it a second, the software has determined that 12.1 pips, 121 points, is the average movement per 30 minutes over the past month. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense for you. Um, it's just a way, really, that you could apply this to each pair. You're going to have a different number, but it's going to be specific to that pair and that pair's movement. So it's just one way of doing things. And as you probably noticed, you know, there's a multiplier here. You could multiply it by 1, 2, 0.5. You know, you could really play around with this and make sure it's running at the speed that, that you like to trade. Okay, so that is the 0.0 bars uh, from OVO. And if you have any questions, just feel free to pop them in the comments below this video.